What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today my buddy Ian Cummings dropped a seven round mock draft so I'm going to be a little bit psycho and review every single pick. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know how to use YouTube. Let's get right into this. As I'm continuing to grade every single deep player in this class, I'm also gearing up for a seven round mock draft. I'm also starting a full time job this week. I am also celebrating my birthday this week. It's a hectic week, but we're going to get everything done because I'm super excited to be able to bring you guys the content that I actually want to give you guys. Let's get right into this, though. Again, hop on the hype train early. We just breached 11,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Had our best two days in show history this past week, so I have you to thank. Let's get right into this, though, because we have a lot to break down. Starting out, this does have a big trade. The Giants trade back from 6 to 18 for T. Higgins and a 2025 second round pick. So, you know, uh, technically the Giants end up, you know, moving a significant margin, but they still end up getting their number one wide receiver. Right now, it doesn't seem like the Bengals are going to be trading T. Higgins, but I can guarantee you if the Giants don't feel comfortable with who is actually there at pick six, which this is a live reaction, we'll see. I'm obviously not going to read through 250 picks before talking about 250 picks, but... You know, uh, it definitely could be where, you know, they feel very uncomfortable with the options at pick number six and still get their first round pick and an extra pick and they get their wide receiver one. So I'd be very excited to see what happens here. Let's get right into this, though. Uh, Bears end up selecting Caleb Williams. So this was, you know, apparently hours before the Steelers trade was announced. Awesome. Doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change much, but apparently maybe the bears or maybe the Steelers draft a quarterback in this we'll see but regardless uh Caleb Williams is the pick all you Bears fans out there who were going crazy about getting Caleb Williams over Justin Fields don't rejoice I don't know cry I I mean I love Justin Fields I'm a Steelers fan I'm happy for him and honestly he's in a very good situation as if you really love Justin Fields this was probably the best option for him apart from maybe trading out, getting a ton of draft capital, and then still getting Marvin Harrison Jr. But uh, Caleb Williams, great player. You know, we'll continue discussing him as time goes on. But, you know, again, we talk about him every single video. Feel free to look at another one for more in-depth analysis because we have 200-something picks. Then we got Washington going at Jaden Daniels. Below my face is my board, by the way. So we'll be scrolling through that as well. Uh, Washington goes Jaden over Drake May. Because Drake May ends up going at three, I don't think the Commanders would go Jaden Daniels. I think, actually, if the Patriots really want Drake May, which apparently they don't, but if they want Drake May, I could see a two, three pick swap right here uh, and then allow the Commanders essentially to say, hey, you know, we want Jaden and we don't think that anybody else is going to take him in the short range. I would approach it that way but the Jaden Daniels is a great quarterback he is my QB too but I do also have issues with his durability and behind this offensive line we'll have to see how they fix it I do have my reservations Minnesota Vikings then draft Drake May via that trade up 11 and 23 and a 2025 first essentially the 49ers trade I think that's you know perfectly reasonable if New England wants to move out I wouldn't move out with New England, but again, there's a lot of good quarterbacks in this class that probably will be there at 23, probably will be there at their second round pick. So I'm very excited to see what happens there. But the Vikings end up trading up and selecting Drake May as they should. It's a great, it's a great, great pick. So I think that Drake May could be an actual superstar on the squad. So definitely the right move for the Minnesota. I don't know about New England, even though New England's not a great situation for anybody at this moment. Uh, Cardinals then draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Makes sense to me. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of Marvin. He's number four on my board. People think that's insane because he's a really, really good player. And he's not there because I don't think he's a good player. He is a blue chip player on my board. Remember that? Uh, it's because I just fell in love with Terry and Arnold. It's more so a love for another player than not as much love for Marvin Harrison Jr. It's a very good class. The Cardinals are pretty damn desperate to get their answer at wide receiver. But at number five, the Chargers go Joe Alt. I would easily be looking to draft a wide receiver at this point. I don't think that the Chargers, because this is, if it were only hours before the Justin Fields trade, this is after the trade where uh, the Chargers sent, well, speaking up to the Bears, uh, the Chargers sent Keenan Allen to the Bears. So I think this would easily, in my opinion, be 
a wide receiver selection. We'll see how they address it as time goes on. The Bengals, remember, this was a trade. Um, the Bengals received that, you know, the number six pick via trading uh, T. Higgins, essentially as part of that move up. They select Romo Dunze. You know, it's just a cheaper option for a really good red zone threat. I love Rome. Personally, I actually would have went after Malik Neighbors because of the fact that, you know, I actually think this team certainly could benefit from even more deep speed. I know Romo Dunze is a perfect, you know, T. Higgins replacement because similar size and ability, but I don't know. Something about going after Malik Neighbors and just going back to LSU and getting a supremely talented player who I think is a tier above Romo Dunze is the right move, but not a bad move by any stretch of the imagination. You got the Denver Broncos going J.J. McCarthy here at pick number seven. Uh, the Titans received a future first. I think the Titans actually won in this trade right here because the Denver Broncos giving their first round pick could be the number one overall pick. It genuinely, I think the Broncos might be in a really, really rough situation, especially if they bring in J.J. McCarthy. Tennessee would be smart to do this. I'm excited to see what offensive linemen they bring in at pick number seven. At pick eight, the Falcons go Dallas Turner. It seems pretty much penciled in at this point. You know, if there were any other quarterbacks on the board, I would recommend potentially moving out and then getting some good draft capital. And then, you know, worst case scenario, you end up getting, you know, a solid corner like Terry and Arnold, or you end up getting another really good edge rusher in Jared Verse. But Dallas Turner is far, far, far away from being a bad option. He's phenomenal. He works really well in that Raheem Morris system. He'd be the Byron Murphy, not Byron Murphy, excuse me, Byron Young for Raheem Morris there in ATL. At pick number nine, the Bears go Malik Neighbors. That's like the best possible scenario. Keenan Allen, Malik Neighbors. So apparently they do have uh, Keenan Allen factored into this as well. So a little bit more questionable on the uh, Chargers side of things. But Malik Neighbors, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, wild. Absolutely wild. But, you know, that's a great trade there for, or a great move there for Chicago. Pick number 10, the Jets go Troy Fautonu, tackle out of Washington. Brojmo and I were actually just talking about this. We actually do stream. We're going to be trying to do it every single week, but, you know, We'll see what happens, but you know, most likely every week to every other week. Also subscribe to draft bros. It's another YouTube show that he and I are going to be posting more and more on. And honestly, I might just start shit posting over there just for, uh, you know, just for fun. The videos that I don't think would do well on this channel just to build it up a little bit. It's just about 350 subs. So feel free to get that up so we can actually start making more content over there. But we actually ended up discussing surprise top 10 players and Troy Fautanu and Brian Thomas Jr. were the two guys mentioned because of what the Jets could do. Because yes, Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses, old, potentially injury prone as well. Also on one year deals. So Fautanu could be a guard instantly, but also you have I mean, someone who could play tackle very, very well. I would be opting for another tackle if you are going to be going the tackle route. I don't know if Aaron is going to want, I think Aaron's going to have a much larger role in this draft than I think we might expect. And it might be Brian Thomas that's the choice here over Troy Fautanu. But still, it's a great selection. I would prefer some more of the other tackles. As you can see my board, it's pretty obvious what tackles I love. But Troy is one of those guys who's getting a lot of love for having 34 and a half inch arms and being a very, very violent blocker. And he would be a great understudy too. The Patriots moved back and ended up getting Olu Fashanu tackle out of Penn State. You know, this is certainly a very, very solid pick. You know, the Patriots need to revamp their offensive line a little bit more. You know, you got Jakuma Cora for there. You also have, you know, Michael Awenu. Even though technically our lads has him listed as a guard, I really hope that he plays tackle. Like the dude is just phenomenal, just all over the offensive line. And, you know, this team is pretty desperate for offensive tackle help. But Olu Pashanu would be great to be mentored under him, even though, you know, it says it right here as well. But, you know, this is going to be one hell of a dynamic duo. My only issue is that Olu's hands are small and I never really take that into account until I see that they have poor control in the run game. And I think that's because of his hand size. And that's something that you can't change and something that won't improve at the next level. It's my one big potential concern there for Olu. At pick number 12, the Titans go Tali Fuwaga. So they traded back, got potentially the number one pick in the next year and got Tali Fuwaga. That's an A++++ move. So good job for Tennessee. Vegas Raiders then draft Quinion Mitchell. 
I think Quinion Mitchell's the dream selection for Antonio Pierce sitting at this spot. I love it to death. I think this would be as good of a pick as you could ever ask for. You know, extremely sticky in man coverage. And the very few reps that he had that were press man on Toledo's tape, God tier. There was this rep on the goal line that Quinion Mitchell could not have played it better. It was actually a PBU as well, so it's probably in his highlights. But, you know, stayed in the hip pocket, genuinely could not have played it better. Maybe he could have gotten an interception, but, you know, he had unbelievable positioning. He just kept perfectly in stride and then had a beautiful pass breakup. Like, there was nothing that he could have done better. So I think that the fact that he's shown in a very limited role that, you know, he's able to even be better than he was in off-man coverage, that is exciting for me. I think that Quinion Mitchell could certainly be like one of those players where you just essentially leave him on an island with uh, a top tier wide receiver and very well could lock him down. So super excited for that. Pick number 14, the Saints go Amarius Mims, tackle out of Georgia. I don't know if the Saints actually do this, but I think it'd be very, very smart because Amarius one needs to get a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more healthy as well. But you know, Trevor Penning is a far inferior product to Amarius Mims. I just to be blatantly blunt, I hated Trevor Penning as a prospect. I don't think he was a top 75 player for me in that class. But Amarius Mims, he's someone who I adore. So I don't think that's going to be a very similar situation. Of course, all my tackles are going to be regraded over the next week as well. Because I regrade every prospect post combine just to make sure that we know all their roles and everything. And it is like really good to take a look back and see if their tape affirms or denies what the, uh, the measurements say. It's a good way to you know, re-reference back and make sure everything is on point. Also, I love the combine because it randomly points out in the senior bowl as well, because it randomly just points out players that you never really thought to take a deeper look into that you fall in love with. <clears throat> Andrew Phillips. I also have a corners video out that you can check out that breaks down every single player in the top 17 of my corners. Pick number 15, Colts go Brock Bowers. Incredible. I mean, you know, it's the best option for the team. Maybe I would say there's one better option, and that's my number three player in the class, Terry and Arnold, because I think he is unreal, like genuinely unreal. But Brock Bowers is technically above him, and he's, to me, a generational level weapon. So I think Anthony Richardson would definitely love that. Pick 16, JPJ goes to Seattle. It's a pick I made several times. I think it's perfectly fine that I think it's a right guard spot, if I'm not mistaken, is wide open. Right or left doesn't really matter to me. I think it's a left guard spot because Lewis was left. But, you know, the left guard spot wide open, center technically open if you want to kick Oluwatimi over to guard. But I love Olu Oluwatimi. Love him to death. Y'all know how much I did. Uh, Jacksonville somehow snags Terry and Arnold. You know, for me, he is a top three player in the class. I think he's phenomenal. Pick 18, the Giants via this trade back. Remember, they traded for T. Higgins and got an extra second round pick next year for it. Uh, they got J.C. Latham out of Bama. Another Bama tackle. I, I don't think so. <laughs> they ended up bringing on Jermaine Illuminor as well. I think that with the Raiders O-line coach coming over, I don't think they go after offensive line in the first. You know, this is still a prime opportunity to go after Brian Thomas because this team does need multiple wide receivers. I mean, imagine a starting lineup with Brian Thomas, Jalen Hyatt, as well as T. Higgins. That's how you revamp this core. You could even go Bo Nix if you wanted to. I don't think J.C. Latham's the right option here. Just personally, I just don't really think so. Uh, pick number 19, the Rams go Jared Verse. He's an incredible talent. You know, just I think the Rams would be blessed to have Jared Verse at this spot. Uh, Aaron Donald retired, but I think this was this was around Aaron Donald's retirement time as well. But, you know, Jared Verse is awesome. We'll see what they do with the rest of the picks. Steelers go Brian Thomas. At this point, it's best player available, and there's no tackles on the board. I can support this one fully. Uh, pick number 21, Byron Murphy goes to the Dolphins. Defense interior, you know, I think that, it's pretty big issue. So getting Byron Murphy isn't a bad option at all. Eagles then go Chop. Um, not a fan of this one, personally. You know, you look, and Chop's a great developmental edge rusher, but, you know, they already restructured Sweat. They brought in Huff. They have Nolan Smith. They have BG. They might even keep Hassan Reddick. It just doesn't make sense to bring on a sixth edge rusher at this point at all. Uh, I would be looking at potentially defensive back at this point. You even could tried to develop an offensive lineman at this point. Like there's to me, there's better options, especially for Philadelphia at this pick. 
Uh, pick number 23, the Patriots go Michael Penix Jr. So talked about it, debated whether they were going to go it in the first round or not. End up getting Olu Fashanu and Michael Penix. You know, I'm definitely going to be intrigued to see how he performs without a really good receiving core. I personally would have maybe tried to go after A.D. Mitchell at this point and then tried to see if Bo Nix or Michael Penix could slip to that next pick. Uh, Lions trade up with the Dallas Cowboys. So got Lions um, ended up sending pick number 73, which is from Minnesota. So they do have this pick. Uh, ended up getting Leatu Latu. I think this is fine. You know, they did just bring in Marcus Davenport as well. So, you know, you're you're essentially overloading that edge core again, very similarly to the Eagles. And I think there's still really high quality corners on the board that you could have waited for and, you know, high quality interior offensive linemen as well. I think that would have been the better move for the Lions in terms of their return on investment. And I ended up taking Chop Robinson in my own mock, but deep down, it's like I feel Graham Barton would have been almost an ideal Lions pick to fit in at guard in the short run and even potentially succeed if Frank Ragnow is center in the long. Green Bay Packers go Kool-Aid. I think Cooper DeGene's the best option here. You're looking for a strong safety. You're also looking for corner competition, absolutely. But I think their corner class is so damn deep, and I love Kool-Aid. I mean, look at it. Kool-Aid's number 27 on my board. I support this. But I'd be valuing that versatility a little bit more, but we'll see what the Packers do with the rest of the draft. Buccaneers then go Cooper DeGene. I mean, it, it's perfectly fine. You got uh, Zion McCollum there, who I would love to see get a little bit more time, but we'll see what Cooper DeGene ends up doing for this squad. Super versatile. He's not going to be a bust because you'll find a role for him. He might not be as efficient or as great as what he, we think he could be, but I do know that he will be an impact on special teams right away. So he is going to be an impact player. Cardinals end up getting Grant Barton lineman out of Duke. So yeah, I think that the fact is you have a bona fide starter on offensive line for a long time. I think defensive interior is a little bit more of a pressing issue, but again, we have seven rounds to do that. Grant Barton's a phenomenal player. And I just love the fact that you have a mobile offensive lineman that's going to be extremely consistent. That's a very valuable asset. Pick 28, the Bills go A.D. Mitchell, dream selection. I mean, I think that you should be going top 20. If the Steelers get him, I'm going to lose my marbles, and I'm going to love it. But we got Brian Thomas Jr. in this, so very excited. Uh, Cowboys then move back and get Tyler Guyton. You know, uh, I think this is not a bad choice by any stretch. You know, you're going to be training him to be that left tackle. But the issue that I have is Tyler Guyton's too developmental for me to start him immediately at tackle, and I he's a little too big for me to start him at guard. I really love Tyler Smith to be that successor at tackle unless you find a bona fide starting left tackle. Before, it was like, well, you know, Tyron Smith's going to be here for one more year, right? So you can have Tyler Guyton grow and develop. I don't see that mentorship there. I don't trust Terrence Steele to develop a tackle, and I don't trust Tyler Smith to be ready to be in that mentor role. And I don't think Tyler Guyton is, in my opinion, ready to start at left tackle for a Super Bowl roster right away. That's why I loved him to the Jets in mind as part of a trade back. I think he needs one year with development from a real veteran that is an all pro, but you know, it's not a bad pick by any stretch. You're getting a high quality offensive lineman. That will be a long term move. Uh, Baltimore Ravens go Xavier worthy at pick 30. It was no surprise that, you know, Xavier ended up running extremely fast. It just, you know, record breaking different story. So, you know, you would end up getting it. What, what are you writing here, Ian? No NFL team has come cl as close to sentient thunder and lightning. Oh, Ian, uh, get out of the Urban English Dictionary. <laughs> like, like, or like the OED, the Oxford English Dictionary. Like, get out of here. Um, but Henry and Worthy would be interesting. I think Xavier Worthy, he's already said he wants to work with Lamar. I, my only issue with Lamar is that I don't really trust his precision with smaller receivers if he has multiple. Like Hollywood Brown, to be fair, Hollywood Brown hasn't really succeeded anywhere at the level that you know we thought he could do on the Ravens. But you know I know that Lamar is pinpoint accurate with these bigger receivers. That's just a personal opinion of mine. And Oh, I mean, it's not even an opinion. It's more so factual. He's randomly a lot more accurate when it comes to targeting like bigger targets, which I kind of wish it were a little bit more opposite because bigger targets have bigger catch ranges, but or catch radii. But 
Xavier Worthy wouldn't be a bad selection. You're essentially replacing Odell Beckham Jr. My only issue with him is that, A, he's nothing different than the player that we already knew because we all knew he was fast. I mean, it's not a big deal. But he's really, really small. And you're praying to God that he is a Tank Dell slash, you know, um, Slimmer Reaper. That's the exception, not the rule. So slim wide receivers don't really work too well in the NFL especially the really fast and small ones. So I'm really hoping that Xavier Worthy ends up being one of the exceptions and not the rule. Even as a Steelers fan, I can still hope that the Baltimore Ravens do the right thing. Now I just go Darius Robinson. I mean, they can just put him anywhere. So I think that's perfectly fine. Losing Eric Armstead, you know, you could even kick him to the inside, even though I don't think Darius Robinson, if he stayed as a, you know, interior defensive lineman would have actually garnered any form of first round uh, contention. Pick 32, the Chiefs go Lad McConkey. You know, it's a, it's a loaded receiving core, but we'll see what the Chiefs end up doing when it comes to the draft. Uh, Carolina Panthers go Adisa Isaac. He ended up testing very poorly. I don't really, like, I don't understand this well-rounded physical profile um, portion because he was running in the four sevens for someone who was not necessarily extremely heavy. He's in that 250 to 255 range. Like, his best trait, in my opinion, is his processing, which is awesome, but you know, I thought he was a little bit better of an athlete than he tested out at. I would be a little bit disappointed if the Panthers go from Brian Burns to Adiza Isaac. Uh, you got the Texans, and they actually ended up trading up with the Patriots. Obviously, you got the Casario connection right there. But they ended up trading up from 42 to 34 to draft Johnny Newton, which is a great selection for them. Jumping the Arizona Cardinals, which that would have been the right move for the Cardinals. So a uh, very smart move there for him. Cardinals end up going Max Melton. Max Melton is actually my top. He's in my top 32. So I actually love this quite a bit. He is extremely versatile. I love he's a he has a dog factor to him and he does have slot boundary versatility. This would be a great move for Arizona. I would say that I'd want someone with a little bit more zone flexibility for Gannon's defense. But, you know, Max Melton's a smart player. I'm not going to try to knock him down. He's a very good pick. Commanders go Tyler Newbin. Uh, you know, they already uh have two strong safeties essentially so i'm not really a huge fan of this pick at all this is a team that needs offensive tackle help desperately and there's a lot of good ones that are on the board especially kingsley suamataya i think this is a little bit of a whiff of a pick uh, the chargers end up selecting zach frazier that's a big need and that gets great value i'm very curious to see how we address the linebacker issue but this is a great pick uh pick 38 we got titans going neat wiggins Nate Wiggins is a great pick for Tennessee as well. You know, very, very smart in terms of processing. Just, you know, he's 182 pounds now, but he just randomly didn't run his 4-2. Hmm. Interesting. Like, just loses all of his weight and then doesn't really run a 40 at 182 pounds when he adds another, you know, 10 pounds to his frame. So, you know, realistically, I think he's like a 4-3-8, which is still phenomenal, but he's still very slender. Um, I would be a little bit concerned going up against bigger receivers, but... You know, when you're looking at this division, I wouldn't be overly concerned if you can just put them on, you know, you could you could have them follow receivers that are not necessarily extremely large, even though technically he did well versus Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson. Uh, Keon Coleman, speaking of, goes to the Carolina Panthers. This is a great move. They brought in Mike Williams. So very excited for Keon to go to Carolina. Uh, Washington then goes Kingsley Suamataya. So happy for that, but they are also still needing an edge rusher because they have nothing at edge. And we brought a position where we have essentially too deep at strong safety. I, I really didn't like that move. So I would really hope for an edge rusher or maybe even another tackle. You can go Kingsley Suamataya and Patrick Paul if you wanted to. Um, we'll see what happens though. There's a lot more picks to be done. Packers go Peyton Wilson. They need a linebacker. They're going to get one. My only issue with Peyton Wilson is that he reportedly had ugly medicals. And for a team that had an unreliable Devondre Campbell, probably not the best move. Uh, you have two really good linebackers above him as well on my board. Pick number 42, the Patriots buy that move back go Jalen Polk. You know, Jalen Polk's a really good wide receiver to pair up with his quarterback there in Michael Penix. You got Atlanta Falcons going Ricky Pearsall. They... Don't really need a wide receiver like Ricky Pearsall at this point. Uh, I'm not I'm not really a huge fan of this one. You know, they need a boundary corner too. There's a lot of really talented ones on the board. And, you know, the Falcons already brought in like three other receivers. I think Ricky Pearsall is a little bit of a reach at this point for the other big needs and proper value at the other positions. Raiders go Patrick Paul. 
Um, they're looking for a right tackle, so I'm intrigued to see how Patrick Paul would actually perform at right tackle. I didn't think he really did too well at right tackle during the Senior Bowl compared to what I want him to. I was really hoping Patrick Paul would end up remaining a left tackle. Pick number 45, Saints go Neyland. Uh, Neyland's perfectly up into the realm of New Orleans Saints edge rushers. Big, like 270 frame, really athletic. Uh, Marshawn Neyland's a big, big addition to New Orleans. I would be a big fan of that. Uh, uh, The Indianapolis Colts go TJ Tampa. I'm not a fan of TJ Tampa. I don't really understand size speed because he didn't even test. If he actually had that size and speed, he would have tested. I just don't really think that he's as good as what people say. He's a solid corner and like, you know, he's fast in a straight line, but I don't see the mobility that I really would want for him. I don't really, I, I don't get this the impressively fluid and free flowing for his size. I don't see that at all. You know, I actually specifically want to hark to and point at the game that he played versus AD Mitchell, where he got absolutely sliced and diced and, in my notes, I said if A.D. Mitchell were targeted every game, he probably could get a catch at, or targeted every rep. He almost could probably get a catch every single rep. So it was almost a favor that he was not targeted by Quinn Ewers because I think T.J. Tampa would have been exposed. I didn't see him actually genuinely cover receivers as well as I really wanted him to. And that's a game where I value it very, very heavily. Uh, speaking of a really good corner, though, Giants go Renardo Green. Giants are garbo at corner at the moment. You know, you essentially have one guy in Deontay Banks who I, I mean, I love that pick. Renardo Green would be phenomenal. Big fan of that one. Pick 48, you got the Jaguars going Rook. Uh, They ended up releasing some defensive interiors. I think Jacksonville wouldn't be going after Rook though because they just got Eric Armstead and this does factor in Eric Armstead. I'm actually not a big fan of this one thinking about it. You know, they need a wide receiver and they need corner. They got Terry and Arnold. And at this point, you still have some very high quality wide receivers that are on the board. I mean, like speaking of them, I mean, looking at, you know, Xavier Leggett, Xavier Leggett, like that you can bring in the dude who sounds like some crazy redneck hillbilly and you're going to have so much attention on your team and he's going to be 6'1", 220, who runs a 4'3", 9". I think that's a bit of a miss. We'll see what happens, what they do with it. But, you know, I love Xavier Leggett just please listen to videos of him talking. It is like, let him talk your ear off. It's incredible. Bengals go to Vondre Sweat. Even after bringing in Sheldon Rankins for two years, 20, I think what's $24.5 million, only 8 million that is guaranteed. So it's essentially a one-year contract. Devondre Sweat would be the successor right there. Philadelphia Eagles go Christian Haynes. Hyper athletic. You're essentially going to be creating some good competition there uh, with what's his name, Tyler Steen. So I would be a big fan of that, even though you have, actually, I'm not a fan of this. Retrospect, not a fan of this pick at all. You got Edrin Cooper on the board. You got to take Edrin Cooper. He's literally a Vic Fangio linebacker to the T. Uh, you got to do that. I mean, of course you drafted Chop Robinson, but I would highly suggest going against that. Steelers end up going Roger Rosengarten. I mean, y'all know how much I love Ian. I know that he's done a lot of these, so obviously he likes to change things up and I respect that completely. I'm not a fan of this pick at all. I'd be very disappointed. You know, Roger Rosengarten's a great athlete, but this team doesn't exactly need just pure athletes. I'm looking for someone to be a bona fide, like every down starter as an offensive lineman. And I'm not there yet with Roger. The opinion could easily change. Obviously, we're still going and regrading the tackles this next week, but uh, I, I did not see a second round tackle. Just watching the games. We'll see when I dive a little bit deeper, but... You know, when you're talking about needing to improve your play strength in someone's offense, there's just, to me, that that doesn't make any sense why you draft them to an offense that's looking for strength. Like, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't compute to me. And I actually would be even willing with the great linebacking core that we now have with Patrick Queen and Cole Holcomb coming back from his leg injury, I think will be perfectly fine. But Junior Colson, you get an actual Mike linebacker to pair up and essentially be Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, but Patrick Queen's a Roquan in this situation. Like, maybe I'd be down for that. But I think that's a a big whiff right there as well. Rams going Kamari Lasseter, it's kind of hard to pass on him, but I do worry about his overall ability in press. Like, I think he does get bullied quite a bit. So I I don't really like this comment either. Um, He's not the biggest guy, and apparently he's like, you know, you're looking at some scouts saying he ran 4-6, which is BS. You actually watch the tape, though, super fluid, and he really does close in on the ball. So the acceleration is there. You know, the real issue, I think, would come in, like, when you're facing Xavier Worthy, but 
at that point you shouldn't really have you should have a safety around i think it would be poor play in order to have uh you know kamari lassiter one-on-one with you know a player that is the fastest recorded 40 yard dash in combine history that would just be poor defensive coordinating but you know leave it to the rams i don't think that they would be the team to do that uh, philadelphia eagles going cole bishop safety out of utah you know i'm not a fan of this one either to be honest, I think Chauncey is going to have a significant role as a for, as a primary safety. He's not going to just be the standard nickelback. You're not going to have him covering, you know, every slot wide receiver. You're not going to be putting him one-on-one versus slot receivers very often. You're going to put him versus some tight ends and stuff. But, you know, Cole Bishop, that, I mean, I love Cole Bishop in this range, absolutely. To the Eagles, again, you have Edrian Cooper on the board. I just feel like the Eagles draft has been a bit of a miss. And again, I've made plenty of drafts where I've missed a lot on a lot of teams. So like, who am I to say? But that's, you know, I mean, I'm more than happy for people criticizing my mocks because at the end of the day, being honest with each other, and that's why I love uh, Ian, being honest with each other is how we actually make better content. So this comes from a good place for just wanting to talk about the specific picks and not, you know, trying to be soft and cuddly with people who, you know, I have a lot of respect for because Ian's a great He's a great anal- or analyst, and I think that he's one of the guys who I do have a lot of respect for. That's why we can be a little bit more critical. Uh, Brown's going Braden Fiske, another one of those players that have been rumored to have some injury issues, not injury issues, but medical concerns, which he didn't have any issues there at Florida State for the past three years. But, you know, there are some reports maybe that, well, it's not solidified, but there could be a report that comes out where, hey, his knee is on the verge of going, and that could drop a player, right? So... You know, we might not have seen an injury, but maybe the medicals, if that report is true, do come out and say, hey, just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean it ain't coming. So we'll leave it there. Uh, Dolphins go Cooper BB. I love Cooper BB. The Dolphins are having actually a pretty solid draft at the moment. I love Cooper BB to death. I do. You know, Byron Murphy, Cooper BB, that might be the best one to punch for the Dolphins. At pick number 56, the Cowboys go Trey Benson. Top running back in the class. This team does look like they're going to be trying to target another running back. And as much as I love my boy, I mean, he was my RB2 last year in Deuce Vaughn. Still think Trey Benson would be a good one-two punch there. The very minimum. Bucks then go Chris Braswell, edge rusher out of Alabama. At this point, it's damn near impossible to pass on him. You know, high-level player, going to be an instant impact. This team's trying to win now still, and uh, it's going to be a great addition. Good, good spot for him. Green Bay Packers go Jordan Morgan, offensive lineman out of Arizona. This is such a Packers pick. Like you can, you're getting a guard slash tackle hybrid. Like it feels Green Bay Packers. So I'd be a fan of this one. I'm never going to shame a team for going O-line unless I feel like the O-line value is not right, which for me, Rosengarten was that. Uh, Texas go Karan Amajaje, tackle at of Yale. I don't think they would look at him for guard because if I'm not mistaken, he's over 36 inch arms. So it's intriguing. Um, you know, I think that he is, I, I want to read this, whether they need him at tackle or guard, Kramam Jaja has the explosiveness, explosive athleticism and competitive edge at 6'5", 320. Okay. I, for some reason, heard competitive edge or saw competitive edge of the corner of my eyes. I'm like, Ian, <laughs> like, was this a typo? But I think that Karan is developmental. It just depends on your outlook on if you're going to need an actual tackle. I don't think I would put someone with 36 arm, 36 inch arms at guard. Uh, Buffalo ends up going bow braid. I'm not there with bow braid yet, but his um, his grade is TBD. So we'll we'll leave it there. Uh, Lions go Troy Franklin. Not the style of receiver I'd be looking for. I'd actually love Brendan Rice at this point. Even though it's a little bit early for Brendan, I still think it would be proper value for someone who could be a true X on this squad. And I'm not saying a wide receiver one, I'm saying the actual X role. And it's one of the spots this team does not have. Like you have Amon Ra on the slot, you have Jamison, like you are missing that Mike Williams type. Honestly, Mike Williams would be a great signing, but I don't think, I don't know what your guys' cap situation is off the top of my head. It would be like that style of receiver, a possession, if you're talking about Madden, style of receiver that I would love. Uh, Ravens go Junior Colson. You know, I I do think this is going to be a little bit of a kick in the balls to Trent Simpson. I think Trent Simpson's going to get the nod, but the value is incredible, so I'm not going to shame it too much. Niners go Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. That's that pissed me off because the Niners don't need more wide receiver help, and he's so damn good. Um, you know, I have my issues with with X. Like, where is he on my board? Uh, where's Leggett? He's at 55. 
Like my issue with him primarily comes down to a little bit of inconsistency with his route running because he has beautiful routes, but then he doesn't run them every single play the same way. But mainly it comes down to blocking. I, I really don't appreciate how like how poorly he blocks or how little effort he puts into blocking. That's like my only issue there. But if Debo ends up, you know, essentially not being there for San Fran in the long run, this would be unreal. And then you did end up losing, I believe his name's Juwan Jennings. Did I get that right? I'm tripping because there's a dude on the Saints that I'm actually connected with on LinkedIn of all things. Crazy. Um, that is, I think, named also like Juwan Jennings. But regardless, um, the wide receiver who actually threw a touchdown in the Super Bowl, um, you know, he could actually replace that role very, very well. 64, the Chiefs go Ennis Rakestraw. The value there is unbelievable. Uh, Legereus might have to just play out the franchise tag, but I've heard that he actually might even get paid. But Rakestraw is just too good to pass on. You go BPA. All right, let's speed this up. 65, Kalen Carson to the Panthers is perfect. Obviously, relatively close by. And one of my elite zone corners in the class. I think that, you know, he's still very solid in man, but he is a top 40 player on my board. I think this would be great value for the Panthers, who just traded away Dante Jackson. Arizona Cardinals and go Malik Mustafa. Malik is a very solid safety. I think this is a little bit early for him, but I think this is, you know, I wouldn't be too mad about this. I do believe he ends up making a rotational starter role. Uh, Washington Commanders go Roman Wilson. This is a team that doesn't need wide receivers, in my opinion. We're still missing out on those edge rushers. The edge rushers are not great. Even the ones we brought in free agency, they're all rotational guys at best. And we have some very solid edge rushers still on the board, y'all. So um, getting really concerned for the commanders in terms of tackle as well. We've got Kingsley, but we still don't have a legitimate starting right tackle. Or if you want to have Kingsley be the right tackle, we don't have two legitimate starting tackles. And you got Christian Jones still on the board. I think that would be the perfect move. I am genuinely scared for Jaden Daniels at this point because this receiving core has all the talent in the world. They really do. What do you need? Jahan Dodson, Terry McLaurin. I mean, you even have Deami Brown on this squad. Yeah, you don't have Curtis Samuel, but you don't need Curtis Samuel. And if you want to replace Curtis Samuel, just go with, you know, Malachi Corley. The Roman Wilson's role is a little bit confusing for me. Uh, New England Patriots then go Mason McCormick, guard out of South Dakota State. Feels like a Patriots move, but I don't really think the Patriots need to draft more interior offensive linemen help right now. Like I, I don't really, I don't really know if this would be the move for New England because I don't think Mason McCormick is a bona fide like superstar because he's very, very raw. He's very powerful, but this doesn't feel like a day one starter for Penix, who's had four season-ending injuries. Like it, it does concern me a little bit in terms of the future outlook, but Mason McCormick could end up developing into a great player. I have a lot of love for him. It's just for the Patriots, guard's not the position I would be overly focused on. I, I mean, they still don't even have a receiver, by the way. But the Chargers go Mike Sainer still. Makes sense to pair him up with this dude, but uh, have we seen Edrin Cooper? Like, genuine question here. Like, I have a feeling we're going to see him very soon, but I do not remember talking about Edger and Cooper. Like, once. Like, am I tripping balls? Like, I feel like this is this is a situation where I actually have to command F this. Like, like Edger and... Oh, my. Hey, wow. Okay, so, yeah, he... Spoiler alert at 86, by the way. Um, Yeah, like, for a team that's desperate for safety help, y'all, I mean, I am a bit concerned about this. Like... There's no, or not safety help, excuse me, for linebacker help. This is concerning, very concerning. I'm scared shitless for the Chargers. Uh, but Mike Sainer still, I, I love his energy. I think he'd be a good addition for the Chargers. It's just, they don't have anything at linebacker and you're still having an elite tier linebacker on the board. Even if you use him as a pure edge rusher, you've got Khalil Mack who's getting old as hell and then an unreliably healthy, uh, what's his name, Joey Bosa. Like, I am concerned. Uh, Giants go Christian Mahogany. Going after a high upside run blocking guard is never a bad idea in my book. It just concerns me with, you know, the JC Latham pick. We're starting to, you know, we're starting to get on the tier where it's like, you know, we need to we need to focus a little bit more on the offense, like with the receiving crew, even though we got T. Higgins in there, like still got to pay T. And then you still don't really have a wide receiver, too. And there's some really good ones on the board, and Malachi Corley could have been one of them, but he goes to the Arizona Cardinals, and I actually love this fit for him. You know, I think Malachi Corley would be awesome. He really kind of would be the Rondale Moore for this squad. So, you know, Mal um, Harrison, Corley, and Wilson, I think that'd be a nice trio. I do. 
Uh, Niners end up trading up, I believe. Yes, they end up trading up. I don't think that the Jets should deny this offer either. I mean, the Jets are going to, and the Niners have a ton of picks, so it's a great opportunity for them to be able to offload them. Um, the Niners move up for Blake Fisher. They need a starting caliber tackle. I'm perfectly fine with that. Cowboys go Javon Bullard. Uh, Javon at this point, it's a, he's a great athlete. So, you know, I just had some issues even in the senior bowl. I could tell that his coaches kind of got a little frustrated with him. I'm very curious to see if that actually will translate into a drop in stock. Falcons then end up going Bo Nix. Bo Nix falling to 74 doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I, I, I don't understand that, you know, for, I mean, he's a guy who went toe to toe with Michael Penix, doesn't have the injury issues, had a career ascension every single year. And he came from an awful organization and he literally went toe to toe with Penix, you know, four points each game. So he's eight points away from beating Penix twice. It, I don't understand. Great value for the Falcons, though. Uh, pick seventy five for the uh, for the Chicago Bears to go Cedric Van Pran. Uh, it's a longer term option at center. I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, Broncos go Dwayne Carter. He tested out very very poorly, but he does have some great power to him. Did a good job there at the Senior Bowl. Vegas Raiders go Jalen McMillan. You know, wide receiver three with Hunter Renfro gone definitely is on the table. So not going to shame it too much. Uh, now we finally got an edge rusher for the for the Commanders. There's just no reason. Um, that we should have waited this long, but at least they had Braylon Trice, who should have been a first round pick if he did not drop 30 pounds. Falcons and go Andrew Phillips. Uh, obviously, Andrew Phillips is the top 15 player on my board. You all know how much I love him. He's going to be a boundary uh, in this squad, unless you really want Clark Phillips to be the boundary. We'll see. But he's just, he's awesome. I mean, talk about rare fluidity. That's 100% factual. He, to me, is the best man cover corner in the class. I have him comp to Jair Alexander. I think he's going to be the steal of the draft. Pick uh, number 80, Cincinnati goes Brandon Coleman. A uh, bit early for me, but O-line is never an awful decision to make. Seahawks go Dadrian Taylor Demerson. DTD, Texas Tech safety. He's he's somebody who I honestly need to update my rankings on, but with the loss of both safeties, I well, I know they still have love there, but they are in the market probably for another one, and he's a solid quality safety. It's a poor safety class, though. Pick 82, the Colts go Jermaine Burton. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jermaine Burton actually played for the rival school of Michael Pittman Jr. I mean, Michael Pittman went to my high school, so he went to our oh. Our rival school there in Calabasas. Jermaine Burton does have personality concerns as well. I don't really want to involve that with um, the whole entire situation with the Colts. They, I don't think Ballard's going to appreciate someone who has been rumored and seen on field pretty much to have those personality and motor concerns. But he is um, very reliable and has the he has the talent. Just you know, I don't really think much else of that. Uh, Rams end up going Tevin Wallace. You know, it's a little bit early for Tevin Wallace, in my opinion, but the Rams linebacking core definitely could use a little bit of juice, and Tevin Wallace has a lot of athleticism. Steelers then go Tanner Bordellini. Uh, Tanner Bordellini did an awful job in terms of his bench press. I think he got like 19, 20, 21 reps. Um, but, you know, we love our Wisconsin players. He's a hyper-athlete as well. We do need interior offensive line help, but I don't really want to take Tanner in the top 100 but he's played all the offensive line positions. He's played like literally from left tackle to right tackle every single position. So I do like that versatility as well. I took him to the Steelers in a seven round monk, but it was just definitely not on round three. Uh, pick 85, the Browns go Ben Sinnott, tight end out of Kansas State. You know, he actually is very similar to David Njoku in terms of that athleticism and after the catch ability. So I would love to see what he does for Cleveland. Uh, Houston Texans, here we go. We got the Edrin Cooper pick. I think that's great. This team definitely needs a linebacker. I traded up with the Texans for Edrin Cooper last time. So it is, Um, I, I don't really understand why he ended up falling in this. That's honestly something I really would have wished for a deeper explanation because people think Edrin Cooper might be a first round pick. Uh, Cowboys and go Tez Walker with the, uh, Laurent Robinson. I didn't even watch Laurent Robinson. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. I don't remember him. I wasn't that into football back then. Well, I watched it, but you know, I was freaking 10 years old at that time. Right? Like I'm not going to actually know the rosters that in depth, but, uh, Tez Walker, he has great speed. His hands are a little bit concerning, but you know, he actually had some really solid reps there at the senior bowl. Uh, with the loss of Michael Gallup or the release of him, I think this is perfectly fine. Again, another linebacker could be in the mix here, but you know, at least you have Eric Hendricks for once. Uh, Packers go Will Shipley. 
I mean, after bringing on two running backs, essentially, with Josh Jacobs and then technically bringing back A.J. Dillon, this is a bit premature with Will Shipley. Will Shipley's great. I, I, I like him. But, you know, being the second running back off the board, it's a bit extreme. Tampa Bay then goes Jonathan Brooks. Towards ACL, he is going to be an awesome back, so I'm very excited to see how he could be for a day one impact for the Buccaneers, praying that he is the player he was before that injury. Cardinals go Brandon Dorless. Uh, you're getting someone who's a nice hybrid edge defensive interior. I still think they need to go after defensive interior with Chris Jenkins on the board. I do think that's a little bit of an oversight, but Brandon Dorless is a good player. Uh, Green Bay ends up feasting with Chris Jenkins. At this point, it's an FU pick, and you're getting BPA. I'm perfectly fine with that. Pick number 292 with the Buccaneers, Dominic Pooney. Very versatile. You can play guard or center or even tackle. That's going to be someone who can keep the offense going. And I'm being very optimistic by saying a Super Bowl run, but you know the NFC is open for teams to take a lot of real estate, so to speak. Delmar Glaze was not a top 100 player when I saw him last, but I am going to reevaluate him and test this out. I think keeping him in Maryland's awesome. Let's just see if it's worth pick 93. Uh, Jets end up getting Cam Kitchens. You're letting a poor athlete with a ton of potential go to a team that is perfect for a player to really bounce back. And I think there's a chip on Cam's shoulder because everybody thought he was a he was like a lock round one. So I'm excited to see him bounce back. Kansas City goes McKinley Jackson. Super, super athletic for 320 pounds. So I would love to see how he works there for the Chiefs. I know they like to move their defense interiors around quite a bit. So I'd prefer Mason Smith personally. Uh, Jaguars then go Malik Washington. This actually is not a move I really understand at all because Malik Washington is uh, someone who I think is a little too similar to the role that Parker Washington and um, Devin DuVernay would play on this squad. So I think that you're getting a lot of the same style of player, and I don't really understand that. I'd want someone to be a true number one. Again, you have a really good wide receiver and Brandon Rice still out there on the board. I, I would personally be going after that. The Cincinnati Bengals go Javon Foster, tackle out of Missouri. This is a bit early, and y'all know how much I love Javon Foster. He's still in my top 100, but that's because I'm holding out hope for him. He had his game versus Georgia just over a year and a half ago. That was awesome. But I can't let that one game really make me over the moon about Javon Foster. Uh, the Bengals, I mean, it's a, I mean, you're essentially reaching for someone who could be something special and he's going to be a backup left tackle. You know, with the tight end still on the board, I'd be preferring to go after that route. Eagles then go after a slot corner and Jerry and Jones. He's a great player. I think he'd be a great Philly, Philadelphia Eagle. The more I ended up actually watching him, I honestly felt like I kind of wanted to comp him to Chauncey. Like, just that energy, the feistiness, I, I was a big fan of that. So, I really feel like if he goes to the Eagles, that would be his role. But, again, it's kind of relatively similar to what I would see out of Chauncey. Pick 99, you get the Raiders, who ended up moving up with the Rams to select Spencer Rattler. I think that's perfectly fine. It's a good quarterback battle that they'll have. Uh, pick number 100, the Commanders go Michael Hall. I actually really love this because Michael Hall is somebody who I wanted to give a shout out to. He's someone who I was actually quite against, but that was against him as a first round pick. So I thought of him as like a round three type of guy, but he actually boosts his weight from 280 to 290. He has 33 and a half inch arms. He has one of the best get offs. Like this is a dude who you could actually even play at edge rusher. And I would actually love it for the commanders. Uh, Carolina Panthers then draft Jatavian Sanders. The proper value is there. I'm fine with that. Seahawks go Cedric Gray. Uh, I think there's some other linebackers I'd prefer, but Seattle going Cedric Gray is not bad at that point. Quantez Stiggers, cornerback out of Toronto. He was a little bit slow to me, but you know he actually played in the Shrine Bowl very, very well. Good positioning. I think he could be a steal there on day three. Cardinals go Christian Boyd, another good star from the uh, from the Shrine Bowl. You know Arizona Cardinals need defense interior help, and he has shown to have great power. I pick number 105. The Chargers go Jamari Thrash. Nice and versatile deep weapon for him again linebacker still has not been addressed and you got jeremiah trotter there who i don't even like that much but is worth bringing on with the loss of aziz al shayir they end up uh, the titans bring on jeremiah trotter it's just bpa uh, giants then draft leonard taylor the third another miami player that just did not perform well at the combine and you know the giants are going to be taking a swing but they're a team that definitely wouldn't be a bad choice with sexy dexy being his mentor then you got 108, the Vikings going Braylon Allen. You know, 
with uh, the roster that y'all have, this actually makes quite a bit of sense. He's 20 years old and he didn't really, he, he didn't test his 40, funnily enough, right? But, you know, that's just because he's not, I, I believe he didn't test his 40. He might have. Pretty sure he didn't. But he's somebody who's going to be more of that Derrick Henry style where he builds up speed over time. You know, this is a guy who needs a year of coaching from Aaron Jones on the little finer intricacies of the game. But I actually love how he compliments Ty Chandler in the long run. Falcons go Makai Wingo. You got 38-year-old uh, there as well as a coming off injury uh, player in Devontae's, or not Devontae's Campbell, uh, in Calais Campbell as well as uh, Grady Jarrett. So defense interior is certainly a position I would go after. I'd prefer Mason Smith, but again, that's because I love Mason Smith. Uh, we got the Chargers going Austin Booker. Again, not going after linebacker. It's really starting to confuse me quite a bit. But, I mean, they should be going after two, maybe three linebackers in this class. Even though it's not a great linebacker class, they still should be at least bringing one or two in. Uh, Austin Booker underwhelmed at this, at, um, not the senior bowl. He actually overperformed at the senior bowl, underwhelmed at the combine. Pick number 111, the Jets go Javon Baker, wide receiver out of UCF. I think this is a great value for him. He's somebody where there's not really any um, all 22 tape out on right now. So that's why I don't have an official grade on him. Rams then go Michael Pratt. You know, this is excellent value for actually a great person as well. Got to meet him there in Mobile. The Ravens then go Jalex Hunt, edge out of HCU. I haven't studied him to be honest, but the Ravens going after an unknown edge rusher. Kind of scares the shit out of me as a Steelers fan because maybe it means that he'd be a beast. Jaguars then go after Cedric Johnson, edge rusher from Ole Miss. Uh, 260 plus, great athlete. Like he, he to me, was a value version of Jared Verse, and he's getting a re eval this week as well. But we'll see where he ends up because he, I think he was in my top 15 last time. I know he was in my top 15, but I don't know if he was in my top 10. Cincinnati Bengals and go Jarvis Brownlee, a top 50 player on my board. I love Jarvis Brownlee with all my heart. I think this would be a steal for the Bengals. Uh, Tyler Davis goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Another defensive interior. It doesn't make very much sense. You know, again, Eric Armstead just got brought on the squad. Still do not have an X-build receiver. Still have some really good ones on the board that could fit that role. I'm a little bit confused. The Indianapolis Colts go Kalen Bullock. Ridiculous value. And if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be replacing Blackman, who was a USC safety. No, Blackman was a Utah safety. Who am I thinking of was a USC safety? I'm tripping. Pick number 118, Seahawks go Mo Kamara. Ridiculous value. Seahawks, the, he feels like a Seahawk too. I love that. So Mo Kamara to the Seahawks, A+. plus. Elijah Jones goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Undersized corner. He's a good player, but uh, I think that there are some better corners still available. Pick number 120, the Steelers end up also going Jaden Hicks. This was part of that Kenny Pickett trade. Uh, you know, Jaden Hicks, solid value. He's had some unbelievable games. We do need to have to have a longer term option there at safety. He'd be a good fit. Broncos go DJ James. DJ James added some extra weight and still performed very, very well at the combine. I love that for Denver because it's just proper value for a great player. Uh, Bears somehow sneak Mason Smith. And to be fair, Gervin Dexter's not a bad comp for him. Both of those guys have freakish size and are great athletes, this would be almost a one-to-one. -one. And I love Mason Smith. He is literally sitting here at number 66 on my board. Very well might even climb up higher. Uh, Texans go Chris Abrams drain. Could play boundary, could play slot, could play safety. I love that versatility at 123. That is worth it. Niners end up going James Williams. You know, he'd be their Sam linebacker. So I really do like that quite a bit for him because he'd actually end up playing where um, I think Oren Burks played last year that that dude who's a bum who just like he had like one of the worst grades defensively after Greenlaw got himself hurt so very well might have single-handedly lost the Niners to Super Bowl but um let's not shit on Oren Burks right now uh James Williams would be a good fit it's a good value at this point he has you know safety and linebacker versatility he's a good player Buccaneers then go Gabe Hall uh, it's a little bit early for Gabe but good get off he had a good week there in Mobile uh Keaton Oladipo for the Packers, getting extra safety depth, never a bad idea. I've taken Brandon Rice to the Texans in round number two. I think this would be ridiculous value. Uh, Bills go Bo Limmer. I mean, obviously, he's a fantastic center slash guard hybrid. So this would be A plus value. He's a top number. He's a top 64 player on my board at 61. Vikings go Zach Zinter coming off a broken leg. But, you know, great value for someone who could have been a second round pick. Pick number 130. Got the Ravens going Tyke Smith. Tyke Smith was way more athletic than expected. I would not be surprised to see him go at the beginning of round three. 
Pick number 131, the Niners go Garrett Greenfield, super athletic tackle out of South Dakota State who will be pretty much sitting behind Trent Williams for a year. I don't know if his actual blocking is worth a round four selection. I'd be maybe taking him in the fifth or maybe the sixth at like fifth earliest. Um, great athlete, but I just didn't see the real tape popping up. Uh, Tyrese Knight linebacker out of UTEP goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. I haven't seen tape on him to be honest, but the Chiefs getting a very versatile linebacker is not a bad move. Niners somehow steal Theo Johnson, the most athletic tight end RAS score wise, arguably of all time. I think that's a great move for him. Bills go Blake Corum. They could use a little bit extra spark there. You know, Blake Corb's great in the cold and the snow as well. Buffalo would be great to add him. Uh, Jets go Johnny Wilson. I don't know why he's listed as a tight end when he dropped way to 230. Just, you know, I don't think he's an actual tight end. I think he could really work as a wide receiver. He's 4'5". He has unbelievable agility scores for that size as well. His issue is drops, and I don't think tight ends are the position where, you know, you need to... I mean, he's a good blocker too as a wide receiver. I mean, I think it's a little bit disrespectful to call him a tight end, but maybe if you do wide receiver slash tight end, I'd understand it. Pick 136 for the Broncos. They go Hunter Norzod. I like this pick quite a bit. Ended up losing Lloyd Cushenberry to the Titans. Um, and Hunter, Hunter Norzod is very feisty as a run blocker. I'm a fan of that. Uh, Jalen Coker ended up testing out speed-wise poor than I hoped for, but you know he's now the new number one weapon there for New England. Um I, I honestly am very disappointed with how New England handled this draft with wide receiver wise. Uh, pick 138, Arizona goes Tyrone Tracy, running back out of Purdue. He's going to be a sixth year who just transferred running back for one year. It's a little bit early in my opinion. He's a good pass protector though. Pick 139, Cam Hart goes to the Commanders. That's ridiculous value. I He's my cornerback 16, but he's still top 100 on my board. I'm a big fan of Cam Hart. Uh, pick number 140, Chargers go Cade Stover. You know, uh, Harbaugh got to see him firsthand, so he, this is not a bad selection. I, I think the Chargers would be fine with this, so not going to knock it too much. Pick 141, the Panthers go Isaiah Davis, running back out of South Dakota State. It's a bit early for him, given the other running backs that are on the board, and I'm going to continue saying that at pick 143 as well. But pick 142, the P Panthers go Millard Bradford. I'm going to be honest, haven't watched him. Going to be honest. Uh, 143, Dylan Laube. Lot running back out of New Hampshire goes to the Falcons. One of the positions I would never go and draft for the Falcons, if I'm going to be blunt. Uh, you know, just you have two legitimate superstar options. I don't really feel like you need to spend an earlier day three pick on a running back that isn't necessarily incredible. Um, he's a really hard worker, and I love that about him, but he's not going to be knocking my socks off, especially when you have someone who is a hard worker and is a great athlete in Xavier Thomas, who the Bills snag at 144. Matt Goncalves, tackle out of Pittsburgh for the Titans at 146. The value is solid. Uh, 146 also with the Tennessee Titans. So they got 145 and 46. They got Justin Obwegi, or I think that's how you say it, Obwegi, out of Alabama. I mean, at this point with defensive interior value, I, I have some other dudes who I like a little bit more, but that's okay. Uh, 147, Jalen Ford goes to the Denver Broncos. That's perfectly fine in my book. He's a little bit, I have him as like a six round player, but. You know, you can stretch it because this linebacker class is weak. Vegas Raiders go Bucky Irving. This is one of my dream fits. Bucky just tested out very, very poorly. At 149, the Bengals go Ryan Flournoy. He's actually a very, very good receiver, and I'm glad that he's getting some love. So good fit there for the Bengals. Then we got 150. The Saints go Jared Wiley. This is going to be, honestly, probably their starter. I like Jared Wiley a ton. 151, the Colts go after another safety in Jalen Charlie's, but or Jalen Carley's, but I actually like the safeties from Missouri quite a bit. I think they could actually be surprising starters. Of course, Christian Jones gets here to 152. This is There's no way he actually falls this far unless medicals because he performed so well at the Senior Bowl. I don't really understand why we saw quite a few tackles that were far inferior to Christian Jones go before, but, you know, I got my feathers all ruffled. They ended up getting and addressing their positions pretty damn well. I just think that's a little bit unrealistic or supremely unrealistic to see Christian Jones, who's a really solid tackle, fall to 152. 153, the Jaguars go Kalen King. His offseason fall has been ridiculous. And technically last season, he didn't do too well either, but he still had flashes last season. Didn't do too well this season or this offseason though at all. The Jaguars get to try to find 2022 Kalen King again. 154, Trent Jones out of Michigan goes to the Rams. I mean, they've invested a ton in their interior offensive line. I wouldn't be 
too shamed uh, to be able to try to bring on another guy. But the Rams also end up bringing on Jalen Wright. Uh, he's a home run hitter. I think that's perfectly fine. And you got the Browns going Ladarius Henderson, versatile offensive lineman. That's fine as well. The Browns just continue getting some good depth. Uh, Vikings going Jacob Cowing. Honestly, a really good understudy to, uh, to Jordan Addison. He was a top 64 player on my board for quite a while this year until he tested out being a little bit lighter. Josh Newton then goes to the Dolphins. Uh, you know, this is proper value for him. I wasn't a huge fan of his game uh, after restudying him, but it is what it is. Chiefs going to Luke McCaffrey. I just think they have too many wide receivers on roster right now, and it would be a little bit of a shame to not let Luke McCaffrey go to a roster where he could shine. A 160, the Bills go Jordan Jefferson. That's good value as well. And defensive interior is a need for the Bills, so I like it. Eagles then get their eighth defensive back, if I'm not mistaken, because they got one earlier in Kyrie Jackson. I just don't think he actually even makes the roster, which is concerning, even though I have Kyrie Jackson graded pretty damn highly. 162, the Cardinals go Javon Solomon. I love that value. I don't know if he'd be here, but it is possible. Uh, the Bills go Caden Wallace, versatile tackle out of Penn State. Didn't really see him being worth actually a draftable prospect, but TBD on that. Keith Randolph then goes to the Lions, keeping him pretty damn close to where he is, was stationed in Illinois. I think that's perfectly fine. Good depth. Jerry is Monroe, cornerback out of Tulane to, for the Ravens. They need defensive back help. I would really hope that they'd get a little bit more of a starter qual or starter potential guy, maybe a little bit more. Um, looking at the corners that I love, like let me see if I could find any of them that I have graded. Uh, Dwight McLaughlin, that'd be the guy who I'd be dreaming of at this point. Uh, Giants go Isaac Garendo, great value. RBBC buried there behind Jawar Jordan, but tested out like a free 220, 433 speed. I love it. Vikings go Evan Williams, safety out of Oregon. Didn't study Evan enough to know what his true projection is going to be there for Minnesota. Layden Robinson goes to the New Orleans Saints. You know, he has a tackle build, which is intriguing, but I really didn't like his game. Aaron Casey goes to the Packers, uh, keeping him relatively close by. Aaron Casey is just a consistent veteran linebacker. I think that he's going to be a good depth guy. 170, the Saints go Taj Washington. You know, he's a solid contributor. I'd be a little bit worried about the overall size of the receivers in that receiving core, but uh, TBD on that. 171, the Eagles go Tyron Hopper. This is, like I told my buddy Keon, who's an Eagles fan, if you miss out on Edger and Cooper, which they missed out on him technically three times, uh, I would be like gunning for this. This is as good of a value pick for Edron Cooper as you can get. And, you know, he's literally sitting here at 62 on my board because I have a lot of faith. Why do I have it with two Z's? I was trying to be cute there for a second. It's with two S's. I'm pretty damn aware. Uh, 172, the Eagles also go Anthony Gold. He's just going to be that wide receiver three depth guy for you. 173, the Chiefs end up going Ray Davis. That's going to be your punching bag, uh, punching bag back. Like essentially you want some dude to be a mauler. I'd be intrigued to see how he performs there with KC. Brennan Jackson, buddy of the show, goes to the Dallas Cowboys. He's a hard worker. Would love to be able to continue having him around here in Dallas and uh, be able to hang out with him in person. So I'd be a fan of that. Dallas Cowboys make it happen. Pick 175, the Saints go Jordan Travis. You know, Jordan Travis had stretches of being a solid quarterback, but, you know, his inconsistency went from being one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen in college to being a really solid starter. And I'm not a huge fan of that, but at pick 175, maybe I could be fine with it. Fabian Lovett goes to the Jets, you know, solid depth D tackle, nothing crazy. Uh, MJ Devonshire, solid value corner for the Vikings. They have a lot of dudes though on contract, so I don't know if he actually makes the roster. Nelson Caesar goes to the Steelers. You know, edge rusher is not a bad position to continue loading up on unless you're super loaded there, which I think that we're getting close to it, but Nelson Caesar, not a bad addition. Dominic Hampton, another safety going to the Seahawks, keeping a dude in Washington, I'm for it. Patriots get a dude with like 37 inch arms from Texas Tech and Miles Cole. I think that's a great position to grab for New England. It's great value. Uh, 181 Chargers go Cornelius Johnson. Uh, obviously, familiarity with Harbaugh. He's a solid receiver. He didn't really wow me off tape, but he did a good job in, in the Shrine Bowl. Sion Vaki goes to the Titans, uh, running back slash safety hybrid. Uh, I think he was better as a running back personally, but you know he wants to be a DB. Really short arms, but good dude. 183, the Giants go Jawan Briggs. I've seen a lot of love for this guy, but he never popped off to me. But again, I don't have an official grade on him. Dolphins go Jordan Whittington. You know, that's just a solid dude to contribute on, like when you just need to give your starters a rest. DeAndre Prince, cornerback at Ole Miss going to San Francisco. You're taking a swing on a player, but he's a solid athlete. So that's perfectly fine. Cardinals then go Tyler, Tylen Grable. 
uh, he's supreme athlete, like really good athlete. So I think that's worth taking at 186. Kingsley Aguakun, center out of Florida to the Falcons. I think that's also great, good depth. He actually performed pretty well there in the Senior Bowl. Oh my God. Why did I forget about this? I mean, like Jonah Ellis is a top 32 player on my board at 30. The Vikings somehow snagged him at 188. That's completely disrespectful, but that's okay. Uh, but, you know, Vikings succeed. Good job for the Vikings. Pick number 189, the Bills go to Cameron Richardson. Yeah, I mean, it, that's okay. It's nothing crazy. Saints get their power back and Audric Estime just ran the 4-7, so that's why he's there. Colts then go CJ Hansen, center out of Holy Cross. Love seeing some Holy Cross love in here. At this point, you're just kind of getting dudes. Uh, Seahawks go Jawan Jackson, wide receiver out of Tulane. Got to almost get ran over by him there in uh, Mobile. So that's pretty entertaining, but he's a good athlete and a good player. Uh, Kansas City goes after Anthony Goodlow. I have not studied him, to be honest. So TBD on that. Eric All is a great value there for the Bengals. He's actually a really good route runner and Iowa tight ends usually succeed. Logan Lee, D-tackle at Iowa, going to the Steelers. He's a solid athlete. I didn't really see too much of his game that I think is great, but, you know, pick 195 and D-tackle. Frank Crum out of Wyoming also had a phenomenal uh, combine in terms of athleticism. The Rams would be very happy to bring him on. Uh, Evan Anderson, DT out of FAU, did not study him enough to give you an honest opinion, but Falcons getting D-tackle help, not a bad idea. Gabriel Murphy's going to be, a, honestly, a potential starter for the Dolphins, like, with injuries and such. Knock on wood, that's not true, but he actually could hold his own for a while. I like that. Marcellus Dial looks like he has a damn parachute on his head, which is really funny. I think his 40 might have been faster if he actually had his hair not create significantly more drag. And uh, he he wouldn't be a bad corner. I like taking corners out of South Carolina uh, late. Carter Bradley out of South Alabama. I didn't think he was that great of a quarterback at, in Mobile, but you know the Bills. It's you're taking a shot on someone to be a backup. Uh, Jarrett Kingston. I wouldn't take anybody from that offensive line for USC if I'm going to be honest. For the Detroit Lions, you know I just really didn't appreciate that offensive line's play. And the Lions need a starter, and that's not one. Pick two hundred two. The Green Bay Packers go Walter Rouse. Uh, out of Oklahoma, you know, that's great value right there. You might as well. Uh, Pan or Panthers, Jesus. We got the Denver Broncos going Solomon Bird. Just a dude to play. I mean, I think they have enough edges on their roster to where you'd really need to be gunning for a starter. I wouldn't be gunning for edge depth. Uh, Bills go Mark Perry out of TCU. The more I read this, the more I really don't want to do a seven-round mock draft for you guys. <laughs> I love y'all, but I just don't know if I have the mental fortitude to do this. Um, the Detroit Lions go Marfius Lialfu. I I think it's good value. It's a crap linebacker class. Browns go Shaw Smith Wade. He had short arms, didn't really test the best, but you know I like Shaw Smith Wade. He actually locked down Jordan Addison better than most corners did. Then we got the Denver Broncos going Casey Washington. He had some good games there for Illinois. Denver just getting some good depth. Miles Harden is one of my favorite depth players in this class. Injuries have kind of made him worth this pick, but he's a great player for the Rams. Rams also go Jaden Crumedy. I have not studied Jaden Cremedy, but going D tackle out of Mississippi State has worked pretty often before. A definitely one Ulu Fosho. He's a guy who I'd be willing to take in the third round. He's just had some injury issues in the past. Uh, Eagles get a good one there. Daquan Hardy out of Penn State, slot corner going to the Jets. You're just getting a guy at that point. Isaiah Adams, a versatile offensive lineman going to the Jags. Don't think he was athletic enough to really garner the attention of bulky, but um, good value. Dylan McMahon. I mean, again, you're just investing in the O-line. The Rams have done quite a bit of that this offseason, so not going to say it's too shabby. Bengals getting Drake Nugent. It's good value at this point. Drake Nugent like slipped a little bit on my board after being sub-300 and not performing that well at the Combine. Uh, pick 215, the Niners go Charlie Turner, or Charles Turner, excuse me. I mean, it's a dude. It's a dude to add to the roster. Might as well. Willie Drew goes to the Dallas Cowboys. I have not studied Willie Drew. Virginia State tape is not something that I overly value, but I'm very excited to see if he can prove me wrong. To John Palmer, um, to the Rams, I think he's a UDFA, but you know we're at pick 217 at this point. We're starting to really reach on the value of players. Uh, Prince Pines guard out of Tulane going to the Ravens. I don't think he'd ever start. Uh, Satoa Laomea to the Packers. It's another, I feel like um, Ian's really gunning in on the overall, you know, Packers get really good offensive linemen on day three. This is great value. Nehemiah Pritchett to the Buccaneers is crazy value. He's a great player. So I think he actually could even get some starting reps. Uh, Cam Allen, safety out of Purdue. 
going to the Titans. I actually like Purdue defensive backs, so I'm fine with that. Devin Culp, he actually tested out. He's essentially a wide receiver. I think the commanders would be perfectly fine taking him. Uh, Jacob Monk, he's a versatile offensive lineman out of Duke. Vegas Raiders going with him at 223 would not be bad either. Dejon Edwards running back out of Georgia. Like the fact that Marshawn Lloyd's here and you go Dejon Edwards, a little bit concerning, but you know, there's been a lot of running backs have been taken a lot earlier that were a lot worse than Dejon Edwards. You're just getting a solid player there. But the Chargers end up getting Marshawn Lloyd, who I have worth being a fringe third round pick or actually a full third round pick being there at 69, a fringe is second. Johnny Dixon corner out of Penn State. You know, you're getting good value there. I love Penn State players. Bub Means is a beast. I mean, I, just for his name alone, but he tested pretty well at the combine. Titans getting some extra wide receiver death, not a bad idea. Zion Log out of Georgia for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, it's at 228. You're getting a high floor player. Miles Murphy going to the Raiders at 229. Also, same situation. Good mentorship there with Christian Wilkins. Uh, Casey Rogers, defensive interior again out of Oregon going to the Vikings. They need defense interior help. I don't know if Casey's going to be the guy for me. I love Tip Ryman going to the Patriots. Uh, the Patriots have actually had quite a few really good names going to them. Keaton Slovis actually reminds me a little bit of my Brock Purdy eval coming out, but um, significantly, if I'm not mistaken, he is older than he than uh, Purdy was coming out. But Keaton Slovis actually is like almost a one-to-one -one comp with uh, college Brock Purdy, but just in the dumbed down, like Walmart version of Brock Purdy. Keaton Slovis actually could be a legitimate quarterback that sees reps for the Niners. I love that. Uh, Nick Garillo, Garguil, I don't know. I haven't seen Nick, if I'm going to be honest. So Cowboys getting a center, though. I think they should have gotten it way earlier because they don't have anything right now, but fingers crossed they can figure that out. Uh, Blake Watson never popped off to me out of Memphis, but I mean, at 234, it's worth taking some swings on some dudes. Speaking of taking a fair estate corner, not a bad idea to take a swing on at this point. Tanner McLaughlin was a former wide receiver, so getting that for a Doug Peterson offense doug peterson led team would be great yabi oki anoma uh yeah talk about that name he was uh i remember when he used to be a top end talent out of michigan it's good value to get him here at 237 uh, jaheem bell goes to the texans at 238 i doubt that he slips that far but the nfl draft has seen players like that slip pretty far the texans would be obviously winning this draft uh thomas harper defensive back out of notre dame never popped off to me but at this point, it's worth taking some swings on players. Uh, same thing with Travis Glover. He He's okay. I didn't really get excited for seeing him, but um, Carolina could always take some swings on dudes. Same thing with Ethan, Ethan Driscoll. He didn't pop off to me either, but Dolphins getting offensive line depth is not a bad idea after losing so many. Titans end up going Sondiata Anderson. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but Lee Dantra Griffin actually performed pretty well at the combine, in my opinion. Uh, he's not too shabby at all. Cleveland Browns could get a really solid one there. Uh, Darius Mousao, Mu Mousao, linebacker out of UCLA. Um, you know, at least Dallas Cowboys got a linebacker in this. Green Bay Packers go Austin Reed. I don't know. Like, you're taking your swing on your uh, unknown quarterback here on day three for the Packers. But I think there's some better ones still, like Joe Milton. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers go Jelani Baker out of Limestone. I didn't even know there was a college named Limestone. So I don't know what that says about me. But Josh Proctor goes to the Texans as well. Texans continue to win. Uh, Buffalo Bills go Marion Brown out of South Carolina. Never, ever popped off to me. So I'm very curious uh, if I ever want to go back to the tape to see him. We got Russell Dandy out of Eastern Illinois. Did not watch him either. Uh, Nia Smith to the Ravens. Really good gadget guy. I think he's getting a little too much hate. ZTF against to the Texans. The Texans are winning in this. Um, he's obviously someone who could have been a first round pick like a couple of years ago. Just has not really been able to capitalize on it. Jaden Sheridan out of Monmouth. Actually a really good running back. Um, shout out to Devin Jackson. He popped. He told me about Sheridan a while ago. Um, he'd be a fun one to see in New England and definitely fits the MO. The Chargers end up getting Xavier Weaver out of Colorado. He's actually a good receiver as well. I uh, popped off in quite a few games. And then we end off with Jalen Simpson, DB out of Auburn, going to the Raiders. So, oh, we still have more picks, but good player. Good player, honestly. I think I'll, these final picks are actually going to stick to the roster. Uh, Ryan Watts is honestly a solid DB. Might even stick to the Green Bay Packers roster, but they have a lot of really good players. Jets end up getting Kamani Vidal. Um, I wasn't over the moon about him, but, you know, perfectly fine. And then you get Eric Watts, the freak edge out of UConn for the Jets as well. I think that's such a Jets pick. So that's going to be it. 
Oh, how long is this video? Hello. I mean, we're going to look at my thing, right? Oh, hello. We're not going to look at my thing. Pause. Uh, an hour and 14 minutes of recording. Hello. But I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Join the show as always. Thank you, Ian, for giving me content for me to rip you apart on because it's all love. You can do the same thing to me any day of the week. And there's a reason I don't do seven round mock drafts because I would probably rip myself apart if I actually looked at a seven round mock draft that I would do. So we'll leave it at there. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.